Uh, thanks, Sean, for you uh, having me. Um, as I said, I don't mind. I had some uh, family matters around, so I wasn't, uh, wasn't, wasn't this available, and but now I am. Three days ago, I had a one session that pretty much kicked it all off with a Saul, um, my football coach uh, webinar. Uh, Saul is a good friend of mine. Um, I think we kind of stirred the motion all around with, the, uh, with this topic, and I'm glad about it. I'm glad about it. People are texting me, mailing me like crazy, like never before. Uh, which, I'm, which I'm definitely happy about. And as I said, after this session, uh, feel free to text me, ask the questions or, or communicate in any way, in any way you want. Uh, the title, Decision Making Before Technical Performation, really, I came up with this, like literally, believe me, I never thought about it in a second. It just came out of, the, uh, out of, the, out of my head like that, because uh, I think we're, we're having one bit, bit of a misunderstanding here. And the video I'm gonna start with, I don't know if you know, maybe some people know, my last job that I had, I was the national team coach of Kuwait national team of the senior national team. And I'm gonna show you the video uh, from one session that took place seven, eight months ago. Uh, one of the last sessions we've had last summer, actually, and we were in London training camp. And uh, that, was the, that was the session with the Kuwait A national team that I was running. Uh, you're gonna hear my voice yelling in, in, in English, but uh, let's just get it off with this and then we're gonna continue. So when we uh, when we talk about decision making, it's never it was never and it will never be either or, because you see um, um, with the people on the pitch of this caliber, uh, of this size, of this uh, age, uh, this is the decision making drill. And with the reasonably common sense, um, it shouldn't be any kind of a question whether it has its use, it's his strength, it's got, it's got, it's got his functionality. We are talking about priority here. We are talking about order and we are talking about what to do when in the age. So at the end of the session, I'm also going to show you a couple other video clips. So it's never a question either or. This is the section of the decision making that I'm running a couple months ago. So there is no question about it. I think the problem here we have is the word before, not either or. It's decision making before technical formation, really. Not decision making at all or not at all. This is the question I would like to clarify to begin with. So we're all on the same page because I'm getting all these you know, tags, ah, uh -huh, he's the one proposing. No, no, it's complete misunderstanding. It is just technical formation before decision making. But let's move on, let's move on. It's gonna be interesting and I'm gonna show you everything that I have. And then as I say, I'm expecting a lot of questions straightforward from you guys. Uh, let's, let's, let's take it this way. A couple of months ago, a sec sorry, a couple, a couple of years ago, two, three years ago, FIFA did uh, one survey about how many people play football in the world nowadays and they came up with a figure a couple of years ago with a figure that 265 million people playing football in the world uh, in UEFA which for me for us was especially interesting and I'm gonna compare this to UEFA numbers 62 million people playing soccer football in Europe this is female male veterans youth registered unregistered everything everybody out of which registered 38 million in the world and 21 million in UEFA out of which 130,000 people, professionals, that means they have professional contract, that means they'll live off football, live off soccer. And in UEFA, 60,000 players are playing football professionally. So 265 million, 60,000 in UEFA. And myself, I did an analysis, something that was very intriguing because I'm coming from the world in Croatia and they always call us, they even now call us, um, everybody saw the World Cup two years ago and everybody was talking, yeah, Croatia plays football, plays football. And I was, you probably all know, I was having all the important roles in Croatian football, technical director of federation, running all the national teams, Dinamo Zagreb Academy, sport director, being the coach of pretty much all those young players that are playing in Croatia right now. Um, technique is what, something what is extremely important for us, extremely important for us, maybe even uh, I complained a couple of times that I would rather want to see it a bit more tactical because it's a game, sometimes a chess game, 
but no, we're having the te technical ability and we're really worried about it. So I wanted to do analysis. What does it look like nowadays in the world regarding the actual technical ability of the players? And one thing intrigued me very much, and this is the analysis of the strong dominance of the better foot players in the world nowadays. So I did analysis. What is the percentage or what are the numbers or what are even the names of the players that have the strong dominance of the better foot and they play football out of these 60,000 or even out of these 113,000 professionals and that do make a difference. And when I say strong dominance, I mean nine out of 10 times using the, the better foot over the weak foot. So if we go name by name, uh, you might as well even have it yourself. Let's definitely agree on one name that everybody knows about. Messi is one, Neymar is two, Di Maria is maybe three. I think Beckham was four. He was with his right foot only making miracles, being the guy, being the man. Robin is definitely one of the guy. Bale, I think nowadays we can agree, is one of the guys using his left foot and being able to keep up on a top, top level. Pirlo maybe was in Italy one of the guys. Maybe, I don't know, who else? Maybe um, Hazard, maybe? Maybe Ibrahimovic, the guys that were doing the change that could literally, what I would say, quote to quote, survive on a top level of football, but only using the strong dominance play as, his, as they had his better foot. Uh, maybe we're going to come up to the figure of 15 people or even 20, but we're talking about the names that are strongly using their better foot. As opposed to that, we have 50-50 situation and I also agree, we don't have too many of those. We have maybe Iniesta and Xavi, they're maybe the best examples, but I also agree there is not too many of these guys that are using 50-50 left and right foot because there's always the dominance of the better foot. And when you, at the end of the day, when you calculate all these names, all these 60,000 names, and listen, we're talking about 113 professional contracts. So we're not talking only about Ronaldo and Messi. We're talking about 113 professional contracts. We are talking about a situation where most of those guys, and that is over 90%, and that is maybe even over 95% are using the 60% of their foot feet, are using the better foot and 30% their weak foot. So 60 to 70% better, 30 per a week. And that is the reality that we have nowadays out of the old 60,000 people, other than those 10, 50 names, maybe I miss, 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 forgot one or two or five or even 10, but percentage wise, percentage wise, that is less than 1% out of the old numbers and players that are playing. I'm saying making a difference and literally surviving and playing. I'm gonna show you some examples that we have here. This development program is, Croatian development program. I'm not saying it's a recipe. I'm not saying it's some kind of a prescription to all, but we came up with this. But I think you all agree, this is pretty much it. You've seen all these curves. When do we start with this? When do we start with that? And the things that we're here for right now is lately I hear that decision-making has priority over the functional, uh, over the, the technique formation. And especially in the younger age, and I want, as I said, I want to demystify the situation. Why is that? Is that okay? Why, what, are, what are the arguments for? What are the arguments against? And, 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 and actually start with the procedure. What is the, the, the actual order to do and how to start and develop the players and what is the actual order to do that? As we go step by step, we have this development concept. We all know technique is in the beginning ages. Later on, we have tactics. Uh, we start coordination and speed are here because this is the window and sensitive phase for that. Later on is the strength and endurance. And we have animation and learning and individual. Those are the pedagogical principles, learning and the group. And then we have competition and the team and the pressure alongside with that. We have technique, technique and tactics, tactics later on. We have formation of the programs. We have application of the programs and then we have application of the programs in competitive conditions. And then we have periodization one, two, three, four, and then we have the other structure, which is complete right now, not this, not this hottest topic right now, but we're gonna go step by step. For me, this is the area we're focusing right now on, and this is the formation of the technical and tactical programs, which goes from the age of, let's say, U7 up until the U12. And that is the trigger, and that is the thing why I'm going to tell you the facts and arguments why we should reconsider, is it smart to go fat first to decision-making or other way around. 
drills. Uh, I think nowadays on YouTube, you can find all the drills of the world. You can go and see the, 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 the practices of everybody literally nowadays. So we're not talking about the drills, even though I will show you a couple of drills, but I want to talk why and when and literally understand the topic. So we're going to be smartly with our own heads thinking, aha, uh -huh, this is why we do that. We don't do that because they do this like this in Barcelona. No, no, we want to apply the thing for my kid, for this age, for this league, for this level that I have, based on the principles that we have. Also, one thing I'm going to tell you, I was quoting, I was citating, I was using reference from all the researches. I'm also having a PhD, so I'm not going to joke around, around the planet as I am right now, speaking things uh, just that I'm bored to do. I'm making sure what I'm saying is I'm using all the references down below after every quote, every, every citation, there's a reference of the article that I, that I took it out of. Uh, when I started 15 years ago, 20 years ago as a coach and then 15 years ago as an academy director, at the age of eight, nine, uh, we had a player that, I mean, I've seen people, Messi playing in live. I've seen Maradona, all these guys. When I was a kid, uh, Boban, the big name is Croatian soccer, Yugoslavia. I've seen like really big guys. But at the age of nine, at the age of eight, at the age of 10, I've never seen something like this guy in Dinamo Zagreb Academy. I was academy director. I've never seen a player like that playing live at this age. All the decisions, all the controls, everything. He was taking three people on. He was left footed, he still is left footed. Uh, every decision, everything, he was so dominant that for me, it was, I was even shocked, is this possible that this guy can, can actually be like that? As the time went on, he became the captain of all of Croatian youth national teams. Logically and normally, I was then later on the technical director. Um, he was the youngest one, I think, in the history even of Dinamo Zagreb first team, playing for the first team at the age of 15 and something, or 16 and something. Uh, playing, being chosen for the Croatian national team at the age of 18, playing alongside with Luka Modric. Uh, unbelievable talent. I mean, I've never seen something like that. And all these things are confirming that. And at the age of 12, you can see this, the Croatian national team with Modric, with Rakitic, with the big guys. He was there in the starting 11 of the Croatian national team. So it wasn't a joke. It was something serious. Confirming the predictions of me as an academy director even though I had a doubt that he's, he's so dominant, he's so, so crazy good, but he was using his left foot so much that he didn't care about anything else because he was taking three, four people on. And not three, four people on, they're just there. I mean, the, the guys that are being equally as competitive, as good on the level that he was. Out of uh, playing all these small sided games, like everything, every time, taking it the way he wanted to take it and being successful with it. I'm not saying that he wasn't, he was very successful with it. At the age of 12, the boss of the club comes to me and says, listen, uh, Barcelona is after him slowly. They're sniffing around. They're talking about the kid. We're going to see how it goes. You make sure he's around. I said, listen, boss, he's working. He's training. Maybe he's a bit too selfish. Maybe he's a bit too, uh, too ego. But no, no, let him develop, let him develop, let him develop. And we let him develop because he was so dominant and truly at the age of 17, Barcelona confirmed signing. Next Lionel Messi, all these, uh, all these uh, posts all around, next Lionel Messi is coming to Hlevic and he definitely ends up in Barcelona signing the contract at the age of 17 and a half, 18 or something. I was not surprised. I was in a way sorry, but I had this little itch deep down inside because I, 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 had, I had a feeling that Maybe this is not the way it's going to be. And later on, you're going to see why I brought up this thing like that. He started to play for Barcelona first team, uh, fulfilling his dream, Halilovic here, Halilovic there. And obviously, he doesn't get much beyond this photo. This is the fulfillment, I think, of everybody's dream uh, nowadays in the, in, in the world. So at this stage, we all thought, me personally, left-footed, the same height, the same way of playing. Yes, when Messi one day says, listen, I don't want to play anymore, he is going to be the guy taking his spot because that was the plan the Barcelona, the Barcelona had. Maybe you guys know, have heard or have seen. Most of you haven't, and you're going to see the reason why you haven't heard much of him later. When you look at the transfer market, and you can Google it right now yourselves, you see down there that he was in Dinamo Zagreb all alone, that Barcelona took him, that Barcelona A took him, Barcelona B, they got him on the loan. 
Barcelona A on the loan to Sporting Gijón, loan to Hamburger SV, loan to here, loan dum 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 dum. They sold it, and now he is say, five years later with the value of two million euro on the loan again. Take a look at this loan, 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 free transfer, free transfer at the age of 21. Loan, 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 loan. With a, such a capacity, with a, such a talent that, that he had, something was definitely not right. Something was not right because he confirmed everything. He was playing for the, he still is playing for the Croatian national team. Well, not anymore, but let's see later on what is the issue and what is the thing that I want to transfer the thing for you right now about this. Let's forget him for a second. We're going to come back in a second and now. This is one quotation. Many of our choices are constrained by past patterns. It has been estimated that we are only 10% aware of what we do. The mind is roughly 10% conscious and 90% unconscious. Unaware, we eventually fall into comfort zone. I think the comfort zone has been mentioned all around really a lot. Uh, this is one of the proofs. And for me, the key words here are this. Past patterns. So what are past patterns? Past patterns is something what we either had or didn't have or maybe do have, but it's being formed in a wrong way or in a proper way. But still, we are using it subconsciously 90% according to the comfort zone intention on the subconscious level of functioning. And past patterns are memory. So whatever we created in the past, those patterns, and they call it patterns, and we're going to see why they are patterns, they are the memory. Oxford University, three years ago, came up with the research that memory is being divided, and I think it's not a big, big of a wisdom, uh, we've known that from before, about a conscious and unconscious uh, memory, where memory for facts and memory for life events go into the conscious way of memory, memorizing, Procedural memory and memory for skills go in the unconscious division. One more time, memory for skills go, goes to the unconscious level of memorization of our brain. Which means, this is according to the Oxford University, uh, if, if we're going to question them, let us, let us question their, 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 uh, their division. That means that we consciously think about what we want to do, our decisions, but we subconsciously use the skills to do it with because it goes into the subconscious level. And consciously, yes, we choose decisions, but subconsciously use, we use the skills if we have them, if we have them. Let's go one step further and say why technical formation must come before decision-making drills. Every technical skill, has it been like this or has it been like this? A shot from Ronaldo or a little dribbling from the kid? Every technical skill, every motor, every skill goes to the subconscious level of memorization and becomes a motor action and becomes a motor program, which is called Engram. Every motor program or every memorization of the program of the memory is called engram. And engram is a pattern of cognitive information inside the brain, also called a memory trace. And it roughly structurally looks like this. Those are the neurons around our brain. And every technical skill picks literally randomly, literally randomly the neurons and they bond it into some kind of a pattern connection. This is not the case and this is not the, the answer. The answer is in the synapses and synapses are connections between those neurons inside this programmed pattern. Synapses are the connections between the neurons and the catch is, and this is the, how it is, again, the quotations, the changes in the strength of the connections between neurons, synapses, in the brain is how memories are formed. In connection with that, morphological changes of the respective synaptic contents. That means that the strength of the synapses is the key answer how well your memory is being 
formed or memorized. Now, how do we do that? Because we said later on, we're gonna go to the motor habit. So what do we do? We have repetition. We have repetition. And about a repetition, with the repetition, we are trying to strengthen the connections. And later on, we're gonna see the chemical reactions of the exchange of the neurotransmitters between two neurons when we do a repetition. But which kind of repetition? In the, now we're coming to the key words and I'm asking for, 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 for maximum attention, please. In the repetition of the, okay. I guess it is, I guess it is. In the repetition of a precise pattern, the inhibition of the mus muscles, which should not be in the pattern, is as important and the excitation of the muscles which participate in the pattern. That means we literally have to ignore and we literally have to try to in inhibit, which means the slowing or prevention of the process, the muscles that are disturbing the accuracy of our repetition, the accuracy of our repetition. If we are using it, if we are using it, the learning process, engram formation and strengthening the synapse connection happens only with the active and conscious involvement repetition of the person. Observation, when we have a, when we have a game, the observation of the kid is on something else. The observation of the kid is not on the learning process and the engram formation. The observation of activity without active muscle doesn't result in learning. Unless we are focused and unless we are thinking what is happening in the th movement we do, and later on you're going to see the examples, it doesn't result in learning. An accurate action has to be isolated from the complexity in order to create a stable program and connection of the synapses. So when we have repetition, and let's say this is the repetition that we have. If we have precise repetition, the connections are strengthening, and when we don't do, they're loosening down, and when we come back again, and they're strengthening and strengthening and strengthening. And if the train of performed activity has been precise, the engram model will be precise. If the train and perform activity was rough, the engram model will be rough and unprecise and therefore unreliable. That means we have to be learning and training the repetition of the activity in the stable environment, even ignoring, even not letting disturb other muscles, the accuracy and preciseness of this training repetition. In case of memory improvement, we are specifically referring to exercise compared to unstructured physical activities. Those are the changes that take place and literally between two neurons, the neurotransmitters with the proteins inside, they're strengthening, they're enlarging, they're being more active and they are forming the bond. If this bond is strong, we have a strong memory. If this bond is not strong, we don't have the strong memory and then therefore we don't have reliable technical skill. What happens with the talented kids? Genetically, like the Mozart never went to the musician school, but he was Mozart. Like Beethoven never, or Picasso never went to the painting school, but he was Beethoven. The talents genetically have strong, even stronger, even these stronger bonds of the synapses over the people that even train this millions of times. Why? Because it's in their, in their genetical specificness. However, we have seen what is the number and percentage of these extra talented people that are surviving, not surviving, making a difference, but how, what are the numbers of the people only using their talent to go there? And we saw that the comfort zone is responsible for 90% of the decisions. So if you let the kid play at the age of nine, he's gonna be using 90% of the comfort zone, which is their better foot. 
It's a subconscious level and he doesn't think about it. He is consciously thinking about a decision, but he's not using the best optimal technique. He's using his comfort zone, which is his better foot. And we're gonna see how it potentially can end. And we have seen how many people we have on the planet that are good enough to run the show and survive on the planet only using their better foot in these relations that we've set. So let's try and see the example. So what I'm trying to say here, here for example, take a look at this player. This is one technical element, turning with the ball, right? Nice and smooth. When they said before, if the program is smooth, the actual outcome is gonna be very smooth because connections and the pattern and the strength of the synapses are this strong that he doesn't think about the turn. He's thinking about where he wants to take the ball, but he's not thinking about, okay, listen, now I have to put my foot here. I have to put my foot. This comes automatically. Things in their head don't come automatically, but the skills, according to the Oxford University, are coming from the unconscious level of the, of the, of the functioning. Let's compare it to this other example. Take a look at this player here. This player here. So the same element, tip, tip, tip. We need three touches for the same thing. One, two, three. The same technical element is rough, is unstable, and he might have wanted to do the decision. He might have wanted to turn, but his technical ability didn't allow him to actually make this even with his better foot. Why? Because the, because the subconscious program of his technical element wasn't formed good enough sometime before. Whose fault was that? We're gonna come to this answer very soon. We come to our Halilovic man. Barcelona played at the age of 70, photo with Messi. And let's take a look the way the guy looked and what is the actual problem that he had. This is the World Cup in, in Emirates, 2017, Croatian national team, U17. I was a technical director at that time. I watched the game personally on the stands. And take a look at the, his dominance, his dominance, but the way he played football most of the times. So out of the out of the ten times he touched the ball nine times with his left foot, even more. Right. So this is one of the guys that I was telling you about. This is a strong dominance of the left foot, and obviously good enough for Barcelona to take him. Right. Good enough for Barcelona to give him the contract because that was apparently unbelievable, as we all know, talent. But take a look at the things that. That, that, that made a huge problem later on. This is him. Now take a look one more time. We have the field going this way. He's left footed. How strong his subconscious program of his left foot is that he doesn't turn in this situation here with his right foot. No, no, he is turning opposite way with his left foot going even this way with his left foot having all this space. That means that even his, his, with his quality of his left foot, which is outstanding because Barcelona took him for that, he had huge problem in a general knowledge and his gap in the knowledge was so big that he will not be able to survive out of these 10 players. And we're talking at 113,000 players in the world with a professional contract that he's going to be able to survive, even though we kind of thought all he would. And he was, at the age U8, what he would do if he had a situation like that, he would line up three, four guys and score the goal on by himself. Make a decision with his left foot, not caring about a solution which is the best right now. And take a look at the situation one more time. Something what people don't notice, but this is... Huge problem. Let's take it another example. It's right there over there. Again, obvious the left foot. And we move on. And now take a look at this example, which completely revealed his problems and slowly and slowly even controlling the ball. 
even controlling the ball in this situation with such a strong program that he was controlling the ball and doing everything with the left foot. One thing led to another, loan here, loan there, loan here, loan there, and he ended up in a hair heaven right now on the loan with such a, with such a talent that he had. Okay, he's 23 right now. But what happened is, what I'm trying to say, at the age of 7, 9, 10, 11, he was making, when people say they have holistic vision, the kids at this age, I'm not sure how can I explain you what it looked like at the age of U9 among, okay, maybe not Spanish kids, maybe not English or British or kids, but in Croatian kids, and we are not a non-soccer population. He was playing like father is playing with his kids. And doing the decision on his own, not using the technique, nobody's saying people are gonna take away his left foot from him, but he has to have at least a solution B because there is 10 people on the planet that, are, that can do it right now on the top level using their left foot or better foot only. And he also was missing one component when people ask me in Croatia, so guys, what do you have? You're playing football. Yes, we do play football. We play football, we, we like the ball, but this is also one of the talent identification criteria that you have to have is this and this. and this. If you have the quality of the football and you don't have this quality, I'm not saying you have to have your bloody head every time you play soccer. I'm saying when it matters, you got to go against the, somebody else's cleats when you have to win the game. That's the mentality you got to have. He didn't have it to the extent. He does have it, but his problem wasn't this because his mentality was okay. He was a strong dominance of the left foot and even this talent that he had wasn't enough and good enough for him to survive on a level. So when we're talking about the talented kids, we have to be careful to which talent are we talking about? Because this guy was signed by Barcelona at the age of 17. There's not 100,000 kids around. And I coaches, you know what kind of kids you're working with. So in his case, who was one of the top talents, the best player of Europe at the age of 15, he was signed and slowly dropped, 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 dropped because he had a lack in knowledge. He had the gap in the knowledge that we all glorified before because he was taking five kids on at the age of seven, nine, nine, ten. And we were not using the time properly. I was there, so that's my fault. But I was 15 years younger than I'm right now, even 18. So I don't want to do the same mistake when I'm seeing a talented kid. And I'm not sure that you see a kids every single day in your back ride, they're going to be signed by Barcelona uh, 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 that often. And if this kid had a gap in the knowledge, so we cannot take criteria uh, uh, messy because this, this happens once in a blue moon. This is not a product of, product of Argentina school because the, on, the, on the last seminar that I had with Saul, I asked the question, I saw the video of Messi when he played, he just came out a couple of days ago, Messi playing soccer in Rosario over there with his buddies. Please give a call to somebody and let me see where is the rest of the guys that are on the video with, with Messi over there playing this game when Messi was young. Where are those guys around? Are they all in Barcelona? Where is this? That means this is not the reason why he succeeded because if it was the reason, then all these other guys with him would have been in big clubs as well. And they're not. So something else is the strong program, the strong talent that he had, genetically born connections inside his brain that are too strong to be denied and to be respected, took him where it is. And then alongside with that, you give him this, you give him this, you give him this personality he had, and he's right there. But when we're educating kids, we have to be educating kids not based on these principles, on the principles that you cannot form a motorical program unless you do the stable repetition. In the unstable circumstances, as the game is, you cannot form a stable repetition. And then we're going to later on see why do we do it in this age. So when he just goes down on a long, 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 I wasn't surprised he went like this. So after we have, we have the formation of the programs in this age, why do we have it in this age? Because the correlation between the quality of the performance of the skill is in an excellent correlation with the coordination uh, 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 sensitive phase of the kit. 
this is why we do the skill formation in this area. Yes, you can develop the skill here, but I haven't had a situation millions of times, you know, kids, they do miracles at the age of 11. They see, no, no, coach, they have holistic vision. Coach, they see everything, tap, tap, tap. They come at the age of 17, oops, we have a problem. They can't do it. They're missing a skill. They're missing a formation. Tip. Okay, let's get a new one at the age of seven. No, no, this guy has a, a, excellent. Let's get him to play because he's going to take and see problems and give solutions and everything. And he's using his technique, which does help him to solve problems there. But even at the age of 17, it will not help him. And for us, this is important, this age, not you seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. This is the using the technical elements for them to be solving problems here, not here. But let's move on. We're not even close to the end. So let's, so let's see what is the way of for, forming the program. One more time. Receiving towards the opponent. Slowly start moving to the cone and by changing rhythm, signal to the ball carrier to pass the ball. Open as soon as possible and receive the ball towards the cone. Dribble and pass to a teammate at your disc. Then it is the turn of the player who passes the ball. Receiving the ball with your back to the opponent. Let's form a stable program, no matter how talented kid is, because we have this period of their development, which they are most sensitive on. But in order for us to understand that soccer is not as exemption, because I'm hearing the description, okay, soccer is specific activity. Soccer is specific activity towards hockey, but hockey is also specific activity towards soccer, right? So let me show you in the next three videos in the sports where decision-making is also extremely important. Take a look how respectable institutions are treating, treating the technical ability development in the youth age. the players pair up and pull each other while performing C cuts is an easy way to offer resistance. If done properly, the added resistance will help players perform a more precise C cut, allowing them to concentrate on doing the technical aspects of the skill correctly. Allowing them to concentrate the skill correctly. One more time. Doing the technical aspects of the skill correctly. This exercise is similar to slalom C cuts narrow. The difference is a wider pattern for the slalom and the C cut is more exaggerated. Using the slalom technique while pulling a partner is a great exercise that resistance while also building strength. I understand every once in a while there's a Wayne Gretzky showing up at the age of seven, but you cannot line up 12 kids or 15 kids at the age of seven and then let them, you guys make decisions over there. The kids don't know how to skate. The kids are passing the ball to each other. Decision making in this sport, I think it's very important, but also technical ability, as you have seen from the respectable institution is also important. Let's see sport number two. Let's see sport number two. And there are several stances. Orange cord, however, the players need to turn sideways to the net with their feet about shoulder width apart. Make sure the player has a big space between the racket and the side of the body. This ensures that the grip will be correct for the shot. The V between the finger and thumb will be on the top of the grip when the racket head is at the side and vertical to the ground. The shape of the forehand is a shallow C. This means the player takes the racket back with the head above the hand 
lowers it at the end of the backswing and then swings it. They the have back. to have the quality of the technical element first in order pass diagonal balls on things around. They will not be able to program this form the way you saw it. Your sport, United States. Stable program formation, stable technical airman formation, because this is the only way how brain is going to memorize it with a stable activity, not disruption of the other elements. Eyes up. Right side of the body. All the way back. Eyes up. Hands off the knee. Hands left the foot, chest, 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 left uh, hand, good. and the same good. thing at the end. Good, exactly. Hey, downhill, boom, 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 downhill. Don't, don't let me poke it. Good, boom. Don't let me poke it. Good. I showed you a video on the beginning, me coaching a national team where I'm using the decision-making drills. So it's normal on the level when they are able to do that, but before they have a skill formation, they're not. I'm a, I'm a I'm also using I'm also using one video, one video of Barcelona. What? Twenty-five years ago, Louis Van Gaal was a coach. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. They also a part of unopposed training in the session. This is Barcelona, twenty years ago. So it all depends what do you do when you do it for one reason what you do it. It's not either or because in Barcelona, because if people see that, they're going to see, okay, listen, Barcelona does only unopposed, which is not true. But they were doing this in this phase as well because they're also trying, this is not for the formation of the programs because they have it formed already. It's for the different purpose, but it's definitely a place for that and for them to use it. 25 years ago with a Dutch coach. So we have to be careful when we're using the decision-making drills before we have this formed already completely. Let's move on. We're getting slowly and closer to the end, but not completely to the end. So after we have formed the programs, after the kids either have the programs because they're talented, and again, be careful what kind of talent we're talking about because you've seen what kind of talent can be and not succeed at the end of the day. After this, we go to application of the programs in the eased conditions, in the conditions where it's easier for the player to do the similar element, but not to be disturbed, so it's going to be done properly. It has to be done properly. That's called formation of the motor habit and corrections and adjustments take place. So what happens is it's a formation of the motor habit and the, the brain sees what it's expected outside and what is achieved. They're expecting a stable program, but outside there is a difference. There is a, there is a, there is a difference in the parameters of the spatial parameters and they are enabling corrections in the adjustment upon they have formed the program. They cannot do corrections of the technical element before they have formed the strong synaptical connections in the brain of the given program. And this is the key word. The better and stronger the motor engram which memorized and stored, the less corrections and easier adjustment to new spatial and dynamic circumstances. So it is not true, whoever is telling you, that this is going to be a, a, a subconscious program because every situation is different. Every situation is different. 
but the, the brain is correcting and adjusting his, 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 uh, uh, the, the connections for the new spatial and dynamic circumstances after the strong motor program has been memorized. Before, not. It has to be functional. And that is the functional part of the technique. When people ask me, what is the functional technique? This is the application of the technique for the functional circumstances in the game. So you got to memorize it strongly and then use it and then use it. This is the, this is the example of the application in the eased condition. So there is the opposition, there is the opposition, but he's using the same technical element millions and millions of times again with a stronger and stronger opposition for him to be able to do first of all and then later on they go 1v1 strong. But in the beginning we have to make sure he is able to do the element technically correct because later on his technique is going to be his weakness as we have seen with this talented kid his talent became his weakness because he had only one solution in the, in, the, in, in the thing. Let's see what happens quickly with the population. We have a population that is normally distributed and that is a talented population. And we have said less than 1% of the guys are extremely talented and they can take care of the job no matter what because they're God-given talents. They're God-given talents. You cannot tell me that, that a Brazilian football school produced Neymar. Nobody's going to say that. They will not even say that. They're going to be sorry why they're not having more of them because this is the fact, but he was just given by, the, by, by something different. He was just having a, a, a huge talent, but not based on these examples can we form the school for the development for the players. So what do we have? We have a population of extreme talents. We would already formed motor programs, which are their talents. We have to focus on emphasizing their strengths, adjustments and corrections, and fill minor knowledge gaps. And because they already, as their talent, have strong connections between the neurons. But tell me, how many kids like that are there in the world, especially in the States? Christian Pulisic, he's a Croatian guy in the background. I spoke to his granddad and to his father. And if maybe, luckily or not luckily, he would have played for Croatia, not for the States. Okay, I respect the fact he was born there and stuff. But, but, this is the strong genetical bond of his neurons because he has it like that. But there's a lot of kids that don't have it like that and we have to form those things. And we said how we're gonna form it in a stable conditions prior to the unstable environment, which is a small sided game in this age, in this age. Population of big talents also already form motor programs to the extent emphasize on the strengths, adjustments and corrections, but also form knowledge, gaps and skills as this guy's whatever they're there. Population of normal talents, complete skill formation, adjustments and correction. They have the program, but they don't have the strong connection. It is very fragile. It is very unstable. We have to make sure we form it. And luckily we're gonna be here, but this is 10 people on the planet have it like that genetically inborn. And then mostly what we have are the 60,000 professionals in Europe out of the 265 million on the, on the planet population of people not as talented. And this is mostly that you, what you're dealing with over there in the States. I've been there many times. And I know what kind of realities they're waiting for you. And if there is a kid with extraordinary talent at the age of eight, believe me, not you, Real Madrid, Barcelona, and Bayern would know already about it if they have such an extraordinary talent at the age of 8, 9, and 10. So do not mislead yourself. Okay, I'm having a talented kid at the age of 9. He can take care of the problem because you've seen how many talented players are surviving on the big level, and this is the goal for us. Not age 10, age 25 is. Let's see what are the, some, some, some researchers that are forcing even researching a constrained led perspective to understanding skill acquisition and gameplay a basis for integration of motor learning and this is a very respected uh, paper physical education and sports pedagogy take a look at the things what are they saying in physical education settings this process involves learning to adapt movement patterns 
you will never find create or form movement patterns. It's always going to be adapt movement patterns. During skill performance, it's important to, 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 to invent novel adaptions, adaptations. It's never going to be create new things because you cannot create it in the unstable activity as the play is. You have to isolate it and form it stably and then put it. And I'm repeating again, I'm doing the decision-making drills in the, my whole life, but when? Once I have the population, once I have the level, or once I have the quality in the kids. But if the kids don't have it already formed, you will not develop technique through the decision-making small-sided games unless they're prior. You will adjust the quality of already formed technique, but you will not create it yourself with this. It just doesn't, it can be biologically and psychologically, it can be. And also can lead to spontaneous formation of movement patterns. The term spontaneous as used here should not be taken to mean that coordinated pattern is randomly constructed or that there are infinite ways that the body can organize. The body cannot organize itself in this situation. Any coordination pattern that emerges during practice and learning is a function of the mechanical principles of the structure of the human movement systems. And we said what that is. It is a stable repetition before you get them in the unstable circumstances because it's a comfort zone. For me, because this is three slides more I'm having, I'm finishing. For me, the key conclusions of these are, and please, when you're transferring my quotes all around, because I've seen people are, those five quotes you can, you can pass around. Not that I'm against decision-making, I'm not, because I'm gonna show you when I, before Kuwait national team, I was the head coach of Legia Warsaw. And I'm gonna show you the video clip of that as well. Because we have a level of that. But we have a situation with this. We cannot develop a stable program in unstable motoric conditions. Full stop. Next, decision-making drills do not form initial technique, but they improve and adjust already formed technique, which is the level of the quality, which is the population, which is the talent, which is the stage and the age of the, of the players. They will not form it, but they will improve it if you have formed it before. If not directed otherwise, children use their comfort zone skills in the free play. Are those choices of the skills always right? Is the choice of this Allen guy always right because he was taking three players on and we let him do that because he was successful in winning games at the age of 10? Formed skills will become their comfort zone. This is what we want. We want the formed skills to be their comfort zone because they're choosing the skills 90% from their comfort zone and their comfort zone is their better foot. And we've seen how many people survive on the level with their better foot. Another one, talent is genetically already formed strong skill or program. And we agree with this. It is a genetically already formed strong skill. And we can implement situational training, decision-making with the talented kids. But let us be aware of the functionality of the talent and of the proper gaps in knowledge they have because they definitely have gaps in knowledge as we have seen the most talented kids. And the last one, and the last one, if noticed that during small situational drills, kids are using wrong technique to achieve good decisions. So, aha, uh -huh, he made a good decision, but he used wrong technique unfunctional technique, but what, he, what, he, what, what he was doing, because he was being successful, but using wrong technique, stop and correct it, because with this wrong technique, they will 99%, we've seen what is the percentage of the people surviving there, not be able to achieve good decisions when it matters at the age of 25. Please keep in mind that we are here, well, maybe not everybody, but this should be the goal, that we produce players to be efficient and good at the age of 22, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 30, 31, 32, 33. So let them not allow and get away with the good decisions, with the wrong technique, and they will use the comfort zone technique, which is their better foot. They will never on their own in the, in the free play use the proper technique. And the proper technique is going to be needed later on to do it when it matters and this is when it matters at the age of 25 when i say 25 not necessarily 25 i mean in the adulthood between 20 and 30 this is this is what i mean
we have plenty of time, coaches, plenty of time from the age of your 13 to the adulthood to application of the programs in the situational and competitive and do millions as much as you want decision making here. You have seven years of time. But here before, if you don't have the, 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 the technique already formed, you will not form it in the unstable relationships in the, in the games. Yes, you can play, give the kids the, the free play the second time of the training practice to apply the knowledges. But if you see they're taking advantage in a bad way, they're taking advantage in a bad way, the technique, and they're making the good decisions with the wrong technique, stop it and correct it because they will get away with it here, but they will not get away with it here. And they will not definitely get away with it over there. Just to give you the example, this is the Dinamo Zagreb U12 team. Dinamo, I was the academy director for seven years. Dinamo Zagreb Academy uh, 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 U12 team. Millions of, of examples of the decision-making drills after the kids, but none of these kids have made a wrong technique in achieving the decision. If we have the population that can do that without technical problems, I sincerely doubt it, then let's go ahead with it. But this is the U12s already. At the U7, they're struggling and we see them struggling. And the, and the last one, and the last one I'm showing, this is when I was the coach of Legia Warsaw. Before my job as a national team coach of Kuwait, I was the head coach of the Legia Warsaw with the senior players, with the 25, 26, 27 year old guys. And this is the training. So when you see Barcelona with the unopposed sessions like a little while ago, do not generalize it. Okay, they are doing unopposed. He likes opposed. He doesn't like this. The principle is you will not do... This is the decision of the senior players of the training of Valeria Warsaw when we had a training camp in Spain. But this is with the guys that already formed their technique. And of course, we're going to use their technique to make decisions. But before they have formed it, we cannot because we're not going to create it. One more time, I'm going to come back to these five principles, to these five principles because they're most important. And now I'm kind of sweating here because I got myself so involved. Thank you very much. I don't know if you heard me. First of all, uh, I heard some interruptions along the way. Uh, 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 and uh, yeah, Sean, are you there? Hey, Remy. Thanks for that. I, yep, I heard you good. Um, it, was, it was a good for me on my end hopefully everyone else had the same how was the, how was the transfer of the voice and the video was it was everything was everything okay to be seen a couple of videos lagged a little bit but i think we got the general gist of them and um, maybe afterwards we can talk about it if we can warm them into a little yeah. package that people can see but um <clears throat> got a few questions coming in and i'm sure they'll continue to come in as we go i actually had a couple of questions for you to start with though um when you were developing the curriculum for the croatian football association when you were in that role did you look at the whole landscape in terms of like you said U7 all the way up and have that on a basis of different talent levels so did you have specific standards or benchmarks for players at each stage of development when you talk about technique before then you layered into where they should be with a decision making process so you like we talked about Hel Hel people, Hel is people, who, people who saw uh, uh, curriculum was made with my assistance in 2016 um, and I'm not going to say the Croatian players were being developed by this system or by this book. However, this book summarized my and my assistant's work in the academy in Croatia in the last 10 years. And now it is the document that is accepted by the executive board of the federation and people who saw the book, they saw, they saw the structure of the technical elements in the youth and they saw the periodization, maybe I should have put it, the periodization of the decision-making drills that are coming after you have formed the initial technical element level. So yes, we have structured it in, in, in there. Uh, now, as I say, it's, it's a different topic, we can go in there, but I'm not trying to promote, because I've never, you've noticed, I've never mentioned my book uh, in, in one word. And it's not the idea of promote. I don't even know where people ask me, I don't even know which, which website you can actually get it from, to be honest with you. But, uh, but um, everything is a structure in there and that is our way. And I'm not saying again, it's a recipe, but the, 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 when somebody tells me, you know, yeah, uh, there's a kid that has a vision at the age of nine. Listen, I understand this. 
but we're not developing the kid for the op opposition of the U9 level that of the buddies he plays against. Even though he can perform this, we're the, I'm thinking this is how we've been trained to develop the players for the senior scene of the most pressured level there can be. And I'm not going to say this, this two years ago, the second spot that we've achieved in the world is because of this. But yes, they were together with these bloody heads that they had. Those are the principles we've been following. And if you want to, I'm planning to actually post the book on a PDF uh, online so people are going to be able to see it. But everything is structured in there to answer your question quickly. Yeah. Perfect. Um, when it comes to a player like Khalil the times and he was a, a case study that you used where do you think the, the gap was there in terms of his development what was it just individually not enough attention was it because he was having too much success and I guess someone at his club as he was developing didn't take the time to correct that what, I purposely I purposely used I purposely used him because uh, um, um, you know people say you know I have a talented player if he, if anyone was talented, believe me, this guy was talented. I mean, he was playing for the Croatian first national team. Okay, maybe not Spanish, but still Croatian. We're not that either. Chosen by Barcelona. So the, 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 the best player of Europe at the age of U15, that was unbelievable. But then when he had a windows and sensitive face, and every kid on the planet has a sensitive face for the technical development from the age of U7 to U12, we didn't do anything to fill his gaps in the knowledge. First me, I was the academy director. Why? Because he was so dominant with his left foot that he was making all these incredible decisions at the age of U9 that you're thinking that you're looking at the little mess. Believe me, I believe Maybe Dodo, Dodo, can you organize this? I'm hearing, I'm hearing some. Uh, I'm hearing some voices. Uh, I'm not sure. Is that a person? Let me just double check. Uh, is that better? Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Uh, so, but then, because people, you know, every once in a while, people tell me, you know, I have this extremely talented kid. If you have really extremely talented kid, as those ten people that we've outlined are, then the whole planet would know about this kid at the age of ten. Because if all the sports that are complex sports that deserve and demand decision-making, they all fall precise attention of the technical education and development, why wouldn't we, why are we rushing into the decision-making the age of seven, nine, 10, where we have all the seven, eight years where the, what I said before, uh, and they misquoted me that I said, kids don't have the ability to make decision out of the peripheral. No, no, kids just percept concrete as opposed to abstract. The younger kid doesn't, so he, he perceives concrete things other than abstract things. It develops later on, and that's what I said. And then the later on, they misquoted me around. No, 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 he says that the kids can't make decisions at the eight of nine. It's not true, I'm just saying I'm being misquoted, so that's why I outlined the quotations that you can guys use if you want to use. I don't, I don't honestly care, but, but, but you can. So, so because it's, it's very important, and when people are telling me, no, no, listen, they can do it. I know they can do it. They can do it big time at the age of nine. But is it functional? Are we preparing them for the big battle when it matters later on at age 25? And when you ask me the questions to answer it for you, what do you do with the kid like that? Listen, it's hard. Because when you have somebody that stands out this much, and he was, believe me, standing out in the Europe at the age of U10, because he was the best player of the Europe at the age of 10, then you have a hard time with him because he's too, too cocky and you can't control him. His parents already seeing a sack of money in the kid, realistically, which is the case, which is the case. And then you have a hard time actually filling out his gaps. So the, the, his big talent can, can, can even become his little weakness, especially in a football because it's so publicly exposed all around. That's why it's, it's I, I, I can't quite tell you, but... Uh, Luckily, it is always better to have one bit of a little less talented kid, which is going to be so hardworking and normal than to having such a complexity in the skills of one foot. And then you come to the big scene and stage and you get, listen, at the age of U9, he was having kids around him. He came to Barcelona and there was Piquet on the other side. Just as well, the offensive players are developing, defensive players are also developing. And they're going to have a hard time, okay, if he's going to be good 1v1, there's going to be two guys doubling you up. 
which worked last 10 years. It doesn't work anymore. And nobody just, you know, he was getting away with this. We were winning games. Everything is fine. I'm hoping I'm getting an... I mean, we, we lost you. <laughs> okay, guys, looks like we've, we've lost Romeo for a moment. Um, I think his connection was a little bit better. We'll see if he comes back on. In the meantime, we have some other questions. Um, he's jumping back on now. Um, I hear you now. I hear you now. I hear you now. Excellent. There you go. <laughs> You see me? Um, no, no, yeah, I'm giving you the questions. There we go. Now you're back in. Uh, I'm here. Yeah, got okay, it, got it, got it, got it. Got it. Got it. Right. Very good. Um, yeah, so I think, like, like you mentioned, there's a lot of nuances in terms of, I think, is that where you guys kind of looked at that talent ID part and framed mentality and mental strength and hard work as part of what you look for because those kids are more inclined to really push to develop those technical exactly. foundations and formations? Exactly. Exactly. So when people see Croatian player, they're genetically thinking about, okay, he's going to be smooth player with the skills. But I also want to specifically outline the personality of Luka, the personality of Mandzukic, the personality of all the young players that cannot make it uh, unless they have this personality to the event, obviously, alongside with the other thing. But if you're looking only in the skills, that's why I'm being extra cautious and extra careful with the talent identification conclusions at the age of you, seven, nine, and 10. You know, we have these kids that have the ability of the holistic. I know you do, I know you do, but that's not the age when it matters. It's gonna matter 20 years later and let's prepare them for these things. And they should not even know why are you working on these things. You know, but they don't know. In the first grade, people, kids don't know why they're liking the letters. They know that you're gonna be needing them later on in the future but the teacher knows. So let's prepare them for the things that are waiting for them. Uh, you know how it is now, unfortunately, I was aware of this. You know, you have the academy director, when they win the game at the age of U8, you know, it's a good school, it's a good academy. And this is the real reality of the world nowadays. And I, and, and I know it, I know it. But let's try to get away as much as we can from this because, and then one academy becomes recognizable because they produce player for the first team. I would like to personally see, I would and one day maybe, I'm going to organize a research with the kids only having the decision-making drills from the, from the youth compared to the ones that are going to be using the formation of the technical skill, applying it in the situational games, and to see what is going to be the outcome in the, in the, in the future on the production of the first team players. And you're going to see what the difference is going to be. You, um, you showed the, the Zagreb U12 group, and as part of this process, would you them into, I guess, more pressurized situations to challenge that technical formation? And if they're unsuccessful, would you, I guess, bring it back to a more technical focus until they're ready? So that exactly. is exactly. how it would balance. That's a conclusion. So if they, if they can do all these things, technically perfect, technically functional, you're going to squeeze uh, uh, the, the, the field. You're going to get the extra position. You're going to get the more complex tasks. But if it's ruining, if it's disturbing the technical execution, then you're going to stop. You're going to have to stop because later on, this technique is not going to be good enough for them to take care of the serious problems when PK comes along. And we're all being, you know, uh, happy because my kid won the game. At the, uh, no, no, we, our, goal, our goal is to produce a player for the U20 national or senior team. And that's why you got to have all these things very, very carefully structured in your head. I'm hoping I'm being, I'm being uh, uh, direct enough so people can get the, uh, the, 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 the whole meaning. Yep, yep. No, I, I think the answers are perfect. So I'm going to open up to some of the questions that the guys have been sending in um, so we can get some of those rather than me just sitting there asking you questions the whole time. <laughs> Jamie has asked, if we're talking about developmental priority, is there a case for a biobanding approach? You know, one that progresses players according to technical competence. Um, his experience is that children with physical advantage at an early stage often reach a lo localized solution that works at a time. 
but ultimately inhibits the realization of full potential? Uh, that's also a, a big question, the biologically the advanced kids and uh, late developers, early developers. Uh, again, uh, I'm going to repeat what I just said in the last answer. Our focus is the development of the player for the first senior team. So we are aware of his biological wave. You look at his parents, you look at his father, his even grandfather, because that's also our grandmother, because they're also connected like in two waves, two wave cycle. You see uh -huh, what did he come out to. If you see the guy has hair on his, on, on, on his beard and on, on his legs at the age of 11, that means he's getting too early and he's gonna be the early developer. If you see the guy, I'm, I'm being plastical, I'm, I'm being metaphoric so you guys can understand more, 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 more directly. What I'm trying to say, um, every, and that's why I respect the Belgium method and we did it as well, where they had a team of the late developers as well because those guys are gonna come along afterwards. So with the early developers, you have to be obviously careful. You cannot cross them, you cannot cut them, uh, even, though, even though I prefer, if you can ask me, I prefer the late developers over the early developers. Why? Because the late developers are being exposed to the pressure, extra pressure of the opponents of their age group bodies more because they're late developers. So if they're surviving, if they're keeping up with the level, with the intensity, with the competitiveness, with the ta -ta 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 -ta, they're gonna come along even more because they're gonna get, get, get ready eventually, sooner or later. That's why I personally like it. But I've seen some examples of the players that are making a big career. You know, try to, try to get my view as a person that has been uh, literally depending on the player production for the first team. So we were not, this much, you know, uh -huh, okay, there's a kid, we won the game, da, 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 da. listen, we have to have the players for the first team, otherwise we don't survive. And based on our experiences and based on our methodology and da, 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 and I'm not even trying to preach around and I'm not even trying to uh, pay, listen, you guys do this. No, no, I've been invited and I respected your call from you, like from Saul two days ago or, or three days ago, or the, 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 the seminar for the Italian FA yesterday. Uh, people do call me a lot. I'm just saying our experiences and I'm trying to give you the, the scientific backup of the biological uh, development processes in the brain. And if somebody tells me, if somebody tells me you can develop a stable motorical program in the unstable conditions, then I have a problem with this and I don't agree with this. So you cannot develop a stable motorical problem in the, in the unstable conditions. And you see in the other sports, that are just as complex, even more complex as hockey is, they're paying a close attention on the individual technique. And then we move on and move on and move on and move on. A couple of guys have asked a little bit about, should there be degrees of freedom? So if you apply a scientific approach to development, would you then correct players who are being successful with the incorrect technique? Or would you say, reward them for using a different correct technique with, uh, with an incentive. Say, if you were doing a shooting I technique. Understand. I understand what you're trying to say. I, and I think I said it, you have to balance it out. If the guy makes a mistake one time, he, makes, he scores a goal with his, with his, let's say, foot that he wasn't supposed to score it with, right? He did something. Of course, you're not giving, you're gonna give him, uh, pardon my language, you're not gonna give him crap for, 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 for that, but you're gonna get him on the side and say, listen, you know, try da, 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 because next time. But if he keeps doing this, for three, four years in the youth, then obviously we have a serious problem. And then one day, me as a coach, I'm gonna look, when I play against the team, I'm gonna look for the weaknesses of the team and the players I'm playing against. So I'm gonna try to detect this guy and say, listen, this guy is using completely, okay, he's being successful, but we're gonna try to block him, to double him up, to direct him, to filter him, and then we're gonna try to utilize it obviously going to emphasize the good technique and good choices and good attempts, even though the outcome wasn't good. I would prefer that. So I would prefer outlining and, and choosing the good intentions, even with the bad outcome. If you understood what, I, what, I, what, I, what I'm saying. Yep, yep. I think it's, um, like I said, it's, you see a guy like Romario who's scoring with his toe. Um, we don't want to take that away from him, but we want to make sure that he has the other 
the other functional techniques to solve the problem in a different way if that's, I guess, not available maybe, to him. Maybe, exactly. Romario is one of the guys that should have been on that list over there. And we're going to come up with maybe five or ten more. But we're not going to come for uh, 10,000. We're going to come no. up for Romario, Messi, uh, Neymar, and then maybe five more. And those guys did it like that. But this is not the principle. This is the thing that they had. They already genetically, biologically proven. They already had their talent and their talent had their brain formation so strong that they were so dominant. But that doesn't happen every day. It's just like talent that noticeable all around. And I agree with you, and you're, you're right. So um, if we were looking at trying to develop a, a greater overall structure for technical development, do you see futsal as taking a, a role in that helping because of the technical necessity, but also the, the different spaces. I would, I would, I would, I wouldn't mind, uh, even though in futsal they're using their soul um, a lot more because they're playing on a hard court surface. So the, for the control purposes, they're using their soul more as more than they use it on the grass, which I don't see much, much of a problem with. But anything that is connected with the technical development, proper technical development, I would encourage futsal as well. Why not big time? Perfect. I guess we've got time for one last question. I think this is, this is an interesting one because it, it goes towards what function is, I mean, which, what is technique and what is a tactical perception. And one of the, one of our anonymous attendees has asked that you didn't speak of perception scanning. The video of Halilovic clearly didn't perceive the full field in the game, which was the weak side of the field, probably because of his comfort on his left foot. But is perception or scanning ability seen as elementary technique or skill? Or is it more decision making um, when it comes to development in the younger age? I think it's. I think it's not a skill. I think it's not a skill because skill is a motor, and this is not a, even though you can all call it a motor skill because the muscles of the eyes get involved, and everything is a motor action in the body. Even though it's uh, even though it's eye eye motion, but it's still a motion, and the muscles of the eye are making the motion and decision, and the same process is taking place in the brain decisions and the processes like that. But I would general, generally put it in the, in the, uh, in the area of the decision making. And um, yes, yes, the kids can improve greatly. The space awareness, um, the decision making, uh, playing in between the lines, turning around and getting the, checking your shoulder. I mean, all those things, when people ask me, you know, yesterday I had a session and at the end of the, at the, end of the, the coach tells me, you know, coach, what do you think about the decision making drills? And then I, and then I'm, you know, I'm just, I can't believe that, that uh, we're speaking about those things. So nobody is saying anything about those things. And you've seen me coaching on this level, those things, they're applicable on the level there are, but we have to be aware who do we do it with knowing that kids are pulling their skills out of the subconscious memory. They're not thinking about that means we have to place them in there, have them been placed by their talent or have them been placed by us or by, I don't know who, but they have to be placed. If they're not placed, they're not going to be pulled out in the unstable circumstances. And th those are the things. Now, when you have the, 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 the technique formed, I would encourage as many opposition, as many decision-making, as many uh, 2v2s, 3v3s, 4v4s, but you guys in the States and we in Croatia and everybody else, maybe somewhere more, somewhere less, it is not that technically talented at the age of seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. Believe me, and and you guys know, and I see your face, and you know it. It's not. So if you do go this way, you are not going to develop. You will improve the already formed technique, but you have to form it first. Now, how are you going to form it? Okay, I have this kid who is from Mexico. Maybe he has to the extent talent, but be aware: is his talent f functional enough? To which extent, what are his other things and, and priority and, and mental and da, 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 da. So let's be careful when we define talent overall, because I've seen really talented kids that didn't make it because we were just giving them, okay, you guys make a solution somewhere there and you're going to be all well off. No, no, no. It doesn't go like that that easy. So yes, scanning and awareness, it's, it's most welcome because we've seen the other day how important that is on the big level. I should have played a couple of clips from the teams of the young teams actually working on this, but today's topic wasn't the awareness. We can actually do one one day because it's a really interesting topic because I respect it a lot and force it. Uh, but today's topic was something else, so didn't didn't bring it up as much. Perfect. Um, I guess I had the final question, and it goes to the maybe on the professional level or in even in academies. 
obviously we have to deal a lot with parents and trying to have them and help them understand this entire process. Uh, like you mentioned, Halilovic's parents saw that he was dominant and they saw that he was potentially a, a bag of money for them moving forward. How do you navigate helping them understand that this is a long-term process and what we're doing at 789 is going to benefit them at 2025 20, rather than winning tournaments by playing positional games in those age groups? I think this is an excellent question because we all, when we speak about the player development, we have to be aware how complex that is to raise a kid from the U9 to, to, to the senior level, having all these things. And then not only this, and there's a girlfriend coming along at the age of 17. And there's a buddy, you know, recognizing that he's a big shot, you know, like they can take him around. And kid's brain at the age of 17, uh, 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 it's completely different. You know how it is. He's the best show off. He's the best guy in the school. To get them guy to be on the straight, you need not one psychologist. You need 10 coaches and 15 psychologists to actually make it straight. So it's really hard. It's really hard. But, again, we're talking about the technique and we're talking about the decision-making. And even those things that I'm, that I'm really fond of and, and, and I'm really uh, into, um, uh, we have to be a little lucky for this type of the talented kid to have, when I say normal parents, that they are normal parents. If we are unlucky that the parents are, you know, uh, uh, then we have a big problem. And then me as an academy director, you won't even know how many talks at 11.30 p.m. I had with the, with the mom crying, da, 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 or dad crying, and then trying to push, 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 and then to take it on a good road. Sometimes you succeed, sometimes you don't succeed, but it's not easy, but it's not easy. And uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a whole mental world. And being a coach on the, for the national team uh, and even on the senior level, um, all these things that we just spoke about right now, they're not as important as the psychology and mental, emotional intelligence is. Tactics, obviously, as well, because you're fighting the battles as a chess more than a football or football, obviously. But the mental, the mental background is, uh, is very important. Uh, also with the, kids, with the kids when they're being developed. But that's a, that's a different spectrum of that. We can also talk about that as a different, different time. But uh, as I say, I, I always, when I see a talented kid, uh, my next question is, what are his parents like? Perfect. Um, well, Romeo, I think we've had you for, for long enough today. As you mentioned, there's probably, we could probably go for another three or four hours with a number of different topics if we had that time. But... I appreciate your time today and we've had some really great questions. So thank you guys for your engagement in this process as well. Um, hopefully this will help us ask questions of ourselves as coaches and, and make us all better. That's going to be the aim for me. And um, I know Romeo is very keen on seeing all of us get better. So again, my great thanks to you, Romeo, for joining us today. And thank you guys for joining us as well. Thank you, Sean. Uh, listen, I didn't say, obviously, you guys, we have a situation with the COVID now, nowadays. Hopefully, everybody's keeping safe. Uh, uh, let's keep in touch. Take care of you guys. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thanks.